Hi guys, I'm back up at the Polytunnel and we're going to go through all the different nut systems that we sell and all the different methods of growing. We're going to start off with the propagator range. We do the extreme aeroponic range and the extreme heat and non-heated version. Then we're going to talk about the origins and the original drip system. We're going to talk about the GT NFT systems and how they work. We're going to look at oxypots because oxypots are a great little system to use. And we're going to be talking about the big MD systems, the two channel MD systems in six foot and eight foot. So yeah, come with me and I'll explain everything about all the nut systems. Cheers guys. Hi guys, I want to talk about the nut systems propagator range. We've got a couple of different ranges. We've got the extreme non-heat. We've got the extreme heat. These have heated bases. Then we've got the extreme aeroponic propagators. When you're using propagation, what you need to be doing is making sure that your roots get plenty of moisture and the humidity around the plant is really, really high. Because you've got no roots when you first start propagation, you want to make sure that you're feeding your plant through the leaves because there's no roots taking up that nutrient. So a good sealed high topped propagator is what you need. As the plants grow and get bigger, they will start to produce the roots. That's when you start to harden the cuttings off by opening the vents. So when you're looking at a propagator, you need a high roof, so when the plants grow high, you need big open vents to get air in there, but you also need a nice sealed area to make sure the humidity is quite high so the plants can feed without using the roots because they've not developed roots yet. And as soon as the roots are developed, then you need to harden them off. Anybody can use propagators. The standard propagators are really, really easy to use because all you do, you put your rooting block in the propagator, you keep them moist and you just keep an eye on the roots. Once they're rooted, then you open up the tops, harden them off, take the tops off and they're ready to transplant. When you're using the aeroponic propagators, you've got to be keeping an eye on the water, making sure the water is at the perfect pH, but the explosive roots you get out of an aeroponic propagator speeds up that process really quickly. So if you're a beginner, use the extreme propagator range, probably the heated version. If you're a little bit more techy, then I would probably go to the extreme aeroponics because they root really, really quick and you get a 100% strike rate. What I'm gonna do now is go into each propagator range we sell so you can make the decision what works for you best. So I wanna talk about the extreme propagator range. We do the extreme propagator range in heated and non-heated. And I want to tell you why I think these propagators are absolutely fantastic. So we have a small and a large. I'll talk about the large. This plastic is basically undestructible. A lot of the cheaper propagators you get break and crack. It's UV stable, so it doesn't discolor. And if you feel it, you can bend it, you can move it, and it will not break. The base is made of black plastic, and it's quite deep with a rib all around the edge. So when you're putting your easy plug propagator plugs in here, pre-sort the plugs, drop them into the tray, put the lid over the top, close the vents to increase the humidity inside here, and you will get almost 100% strike rate, almost guaranteed. Again, we do it in the small and the large. As you start to propagate, you start to open these big butterfly vents that allows the humidity to escape, so it starts to harden the cuttings off, and then when you're ready, take the lid off, harden them off, and transfer them into your pot. We do have a heated range, so if you're in a normal environment where you've got a normal temperature in your house, 22 degrees, you don't need the heated base because you're already creating a warm environment around the propagator. If you're propagating in a really cold place, always use the heated props. What the heated props do, they look identical, but they've got a heated base. Use the thermostat which comes with the propagators, so you plug them in, set your temperature, and that will heat the base perfectly, so your plugs stay warm. It encourages your roots to come out with your plugs, and then treat them exactly the same. Open the vents, let the humidity escape, harden them off, take the lid off, and then they're ready for transportation. Again, the plastic is UV stable, so it doesn't disclose. It doesn't get brittle like the cheaper ones. It's really, really high, so if you're growing plants a little bit higher than normal, you can drop them in here and they'll not be touching the sides because they'll rot and cause problems. The heated one will heat the cubes to get the roots out really quickly. And the vents, these big butterfly vents, will let the humidity escape, allowing you to harden the cuttings off in a very timely manner. That's the extreme propagator range, the heated 
and the non-heaters. Let me introduce you to the extreme aeroponic propagators from Nut Systems. They come in five different sizes. We've got the 12, 20, 40, 80, and the big 120 site. They all come with this robust UV stable propagator lid. And if you look at the top, you'll see these lines. These lines are where we put the Sunblaster LED propagator strip lights. The strip lights are absolutely perfect for these because they've got the perfect uh, coloring to really speed up your propagation process. So how do they work? It's a relatively simple process. What you do, you get your lid, you get this deep, deep base, which is full of water. I always use root accelerator when I'm propagating because I think root accelerator at 0.3 mil per litre is an absolutely perfect propagating root product. Lift them up and you'll see under here, you have this injection molded tray. There's two ways of doing the propagation. You use the plugs or you use the little net pots. How they work, you've got the lid, you lift this up and in there, you'll be able to see there's a small pump, a small maxi jet pump and this H frame and that spraying water underneath, creating a really high humidity mist. What the cutting does then, it sees that humidity mist around the root zone and it explodes roots down into the water and literally I've known to be able to propagate in here and be rooted within five days. It's the fastest way to root cuttings by far. The extreme heat and the non-heat are great. You're probably talking about 10 to 14 days to probably root them in there. With this system, you can cut it down to about five days. When you're using the discs, all you do, I've got a small tomato cutting here. You put the cutting around the disc, leaving enough stem here so that it will root from the stem. And all you do, you drop that in, put it in place, make sure you don't trap it when you're putting it in, put the lid on and leave it. Literally, you'll come back in five days and there will be roots on that product. Again, set your pH, put your root accelerator in there. The spray is gonna create that really fine mist humidity and get the roots on the product really, really quick. You've got a deep base and a high lid, meaning you can grow large plants without affecting them and touching the inside of a propagator. You're gonna create a nice high humidity in here to get them to grow really quick. And when you're ready, open the big butterfly vents. That will get rid of a lot of the humidity. That will start to harden the cutting off. And then when you're ready, take them off, take the plug out, and you'll see that these are completely rooted. Flip them out of there, put them into the soil or the coke or whatever you're growing, and you're up and running in no time. If you're using the discs, put a little propagator plug in there, probably put the easy plug prop in there, put the cutting in there, and it will do the same. It will root out there really, really quickly, and then it's easier to expand and take it onto the next run. If you're using oxy pots, bare root in oxy pots, you're better using the plugs. If you're growing into a media, then use the plugs with an easy plug propagator in these. When you look at the 80 site, the difference is you have two trays, injection molding trays, so they're really, really hard. They don't dip under any weight. They're really, really strong. Put them in the lid, put this back on, and you're up and running. They come in 12, 20, 40, 80, and the big 120 site. So that's it for the propagator range from Nut Systems. We've talked about the extreme non-heat, the extreme heat, and the extreme aeroponic range. We're now gonna jump onto the origins, and that's where you'll be transplanting your cuttings and getting the best growth out of your plant by using those. Let me introduce you to the origin systems. They used to be called Wilmer back in the day when Nutriculture used to manufacture them. Now we manufacture them, they're called the origin system. There's 18 different variants with multiple different pot sizes, with multiple different pot spaces. They do that because everybody's growing space is different, but they all use the same method. It's basically a drip system. It uses a pump, pipework and drippers, and that's what gives the nutrient enriched water to the individual pots. The systems have been around for 20 plus years and in my opinion, one of the best beginner systems on the market by far. If you're moving away from hand watering products where you're having to go in and hand water all the time means you've got to be up there every single day. What an origin will do, it will give you that time back. It doesn't sit in water, so when you're watering the system, it doesn't sit in water like a hand watering system and you get explosive 
grow by using an origin system. Again, they come in multiple different sizes, multiple different pots, and I would use them if I'm in a very enclosed space, wanting to grow multiple plants, and I want to get my life back by having a little bit extra time on my personal time and not having to be with my plants every single day. So like I said, we've got 18 different variants of the origin system, different size pots, different floor spaces, that they all use the same technique, which is a dripper attached to a pump. What we've got here, we've got an eight pot system using 18 litre pots. If you look in the base, you can see that it has a footprint there, so you can quite easily drop it down to the 11 litre pots, drop the dripper back in, and you're up and running with a smaller pot. Or you can jump in and put the 18 litre pot in there, and you're up and running. The only difference is you're just gonna be using more growing medium, if you're growing bigger plants, use more growing medium. If you're growing smaller plants, use a smaller pot. What you have, you have a top plate, you have a tank, and inside the tank, you have a pump. I'd always suggest putting the pump on a timer because origin systems are what we call little and often. So you want to be feeding as little as possible, but as often as possible, because what you do, you get a dry back in the media, which it makes the roots go searching for water. So you get a really big root zone. Then you feed them, they take up a nutrient-enriched water, it dries back again, and then they're off again. It also stops you getting any kind of root disease because you don't want them sat in wet media constantly. You want them to dry off before you feed them again. The system comes with two different dripper heads, and it all depends on what media you're using and what dripper head you would use. So you look at the blue flood drippers, if you look how much water is coming out of that, you can imagine how quickly your growing media is going to get saturated. So we either use this dripper and feed it for really small amounts of time, like minutes, and then turn it off and turn it back on, because that will saturate the media really quickly. Or you use the two litre an hour dripper. If you can see that is dripping a lot less, that dripper will only allow two litres per hour through it. So if you're running it for half an hour, you know you're getting a litre, and then if you run it for 15 minutes, you're only getting half a litre. So it's a great way to see how much nutrient you're giving the plant at any one time, because you know it's only two litres per hour. This is great if you're using a enriched compost like Special Mix, or you're using 60-40 or 70-30. It always pays to do something like this a lot less. If you're using uh, clay pebbles, hydrocorn, something like that, then use the flood drippers. What happens, the water comes out of the base, through these dripper pipes, through the drippers, through the pot, and then back in. So it's a drip recirculating system. If you look here, I'll move this pot out of the way. You've got the red caps. Pop the red caps out, and you can get to the enriched water. That's where you check your EC and your pH making sure you're running your EC between, what, 5.8, 6.2, and that's where you check your EC, so your nutrient strength. Your nutrient strength will go up or down in this tank because you're recirculating it all the time. So always check your nutrients to make sure it's bob on. Put the cap back on, put the pot back on, put the dripper in, and you're back up and running. You can get to it when the pots are in there, that's why it's either end. The pump sits in the middle, so if you need to service the pump, you can get it in the middle. And if you need to completely drain the tank, because each system comes with a bit of hose pipe, disconnect the pump, put the hose pipe on, flick it on, drain the tank completely, fill it back up again, set the pH, set the nutrient, and you're back up and running again. It's one of the easiest systems I know. It's very, very compact. There's no way it can leak because you're sat on top of a tank, so it's a recirculating dripping system. I would always use Pure Clean from Plant Magic in the system. Make sure it keeps all the pipes clean, making sure you don't get any blockages. That's very, very important because it's such a small bore pipe. You've got to make sure they don't block up. So if you're using really, really heavy nutrients, make sure you don't block the system up and always use Pure Clean to make sure you don't get any salt buildup in the media. So that's it for the Origin Systems. We're going to move on now to the GT NFT Systems. I'm going to show you how they work and what benefits they have over the Origin System. Let me introduce you to the GT NFT System from Nut Systems. This is the original hydroponic system. John Molyneux, the founder of Nutriculture back 40 years ago, 
was the inventor of these systems and they've been a staple diet in our industry for years. People have moved away from active NFT systems over the last few years, moving to hand feed, hand watering systems. And I'll tell you now, nothing beats an NFT system for quality, rate of growth, no growing media or very little growing media, and they're relatively easy to use. What does NFT stand for? Basically, growing in water. So as water is passed over the roots, it's called nutrient film technique because it creates a film of water where the roots go, back into the tank, back round again, so the roots get the perfect amount of water and the perfect amount of oxygen. I've seen root beds in the NFT systems this thick, perfectly white with absolutely perfect plants. I've seen people grow tomatoes in here, which have lasted a full season, so almost 12 months in these systems without a problem. One of the biggest things you need to check with NFT is pH and EC. So you've got to make sure the pH is good because if you've got an offbeat pH, your system's not going to work as good because your plants won't be able to uptake that nutrient because you're going to be out of balance. So you've got to make sure that your water is between 5.8 and 6.3, 6.5 to make sure that you get the perfect amount of pH in there. And also your EC has got to be right because you're putting nutrient rich water directly onto the roots. I would use Aquaflakes from House and Garden in this system because it's a constantly recycling system and Aquaflakes is chelated, meaning that the nutrients can be uptaken at a wider pH band. So pH is not as important as using some of the other cheaper nutrients, which aren't chelated. What you do with a system, you cut a hole in the corex, drop the plant in, in cultural rot wool, and you're up and running. So you take it from the propagator system, put it into a four inch block, root it in the four inch block, then drop it into the NFTs. Your roots will grow in there and you're up and running in no time. When you're using the GT NFT systems, there is a little bit of skill. You've got to be using an EC pen to make sure your EC is correct within the tank. And you've also got to know about pH. You can use the liquid shaker testers where you drip the three drips into it. That will give you a good indication where the pH is. Or you can buy the pH pens from Aquamaster. They're really, really spot on, really easy to calibrate, and you'll be able to keep on top of it all the time. So if I was a novice grower, NFT is good, but I would probably stick to an origin. And then when I've got a little bit more experience, I would jump into an NFT because you're going to get explosive root growth, explosive growth on your plant with absolutely fantastic fruits. So all the GT systems now come with the silver corex on top. They come in six different sizes, again, from the smallest up to the biggest. When you've got the corex, you put, place that on top of a tank and a tray. I'll show you what's beneath it. So where you have a top tray, you have a tank, what holds the nutrient, and you have a small pump in there. The small pump comes with this little lead, and what this little lead allows you to do is suck oxygen in here, so it works on a, like a, a Venturi system, whereas it sucks water through there, this water is oxygenated a little bit, which helps with the root growth. In each system, you will get the material. This material then runs down the system, so literally roll it out as long as you want, just give it a tear. Lay it in the system, Make sure it's get covered with water. And what that allows you to do is your roots will then give a uh, cling to this and it gives something for the roots to grab hold of. Roots like something to hold on to. If there's nothing to hold on to, they're always searching to something. So when they've got this material to grab hold of, they grab hold of it really tight and create a really thick root bed under here. Water again is pumped from the tank up this little spout along the system through this brickwork allowing the water to go back into the tank, back round again, and it's constantly recirculating. You put the lid back on, you cut a hole where the cultiful rot wool block's gonna go, drop the block through there, and it will root in there. You use the Corex top to stop the light getting to the roots. As we know, light on roots don't mix very well, so it's nice to create this dark area. When you're checking your EC and your pH, this is what this area is for here. What I like to use is the Aqua P50 and E50. Drop it in there, check your pH, take it out, adjust your pH as needed. 
do your EC again, make sure your EC is where it needs to be and always have these two pens handy. I will be checking my tank probably every three days for pH and I will be topping up with fresh nutrients at least once a week. So that's it for the GT systems. Corex, top plate, bottom plate, pump. It's as simple as that. You can put it on a timer or just leave it running constantly. That'll be down to you. I always run NFT constantly, so it's always moving around. That's the purpose of NFT. Get the big fat root bed in there and you're gonna get an absolutely fantastic plant. So that's it for the GT NFT systems. Again, available in six sizes, relatively small. What I'm gonna do now is take it to the big boys. I'm gonna take it to the MDs. Let me introduce you to the multi-duct systems. The multi-duct systems are the big brother of the GT NFC system. They come in six foot and eight foot trays. They can be used as single trays or you can man them up like this into a four pod system, meaning you've got up to a 16 foot long tray feeding into one tank. You've got to use them exactly the same as the NFT. You've got to be checking your pH, you've got to be checking your EC. If I were using these systems, which I have done, absolutely love the MDs, but they're not for beginners. They work really easy, but you've got to be checking your pH, you've got to be checking your EC, and you've got to be supporting your plant. There's no support around the plant in the GTs and the MDs, so you've got to be creating a nectar frame around them, so we don't have any growing medium. That that's a plus side because you don't have to hump the big bags of growing media around. You're not filling big pots up. You've got a small culty wool, rot wool block sat on the tray, smat, sat on the matting, and all you've got to do is get rid of the root mat at the end. And that is completely organic because it's just root matter. So it's a great system where you're not using growing medium. Super, super quick. You get really great products on it. I'll be using Aquaflakes again from House and Garden in this system because it's based as a recirculating nutrient so your pH doesn't fluctuate as much as a standard nutrient. I'll be using Cultiwool blocks in here and I will be using the Aquamaster pens. So we're looking at the multi-duct systems and how they work. Like I said before, they're almost identical to the GT NFT systems, just bigger. So how they work again, you have a tank. This is obviously a lot bigger tank. I think this is a 127 litre tank, so it holds a lot of water. There's four six foot MD trays into this tank, but you can just have one smaller tank on one tray and expand if you need to do. There is a maxi jet pump in there, sucking through a filter. It runs up the pipe work into the tray. And as you can see, it's putting a lot more water down here because it's such a big tray. You need a lot more water running down these trays. So that's why you've got this flow of water running down here. It runs through this brick pattern, running along the spreader matting again. The spreader matting then curls into the tank. So there's no noise as the water counters down into there. Runs down there. You've got the Corex, what sits over the top. Put your rock wool, culty wool blocks down here and you're up and running in no time. Always make sure, again, the plants are rooted in the rock wool before you drop them in here. Keep it running 24 seven. Use your Aquamaster tools. So make sure you're using a pH and an EC pen, checking your tank all the time. Culty wool is great for this system because it absorbs water without getting oversaturated. I'd potentially be using Aquaflakes from House and Garden because it's a specific recirculating nutrient. Add all your nutrients into your tank, set your pH, set your EC, you're up and running. Come back every two or three days, check that your EC is spot on. If it's not, adjust. If your pH isn't, adjust your pH. I personally like to top up with half strength nutrient all through the week, potentially empty the tank again and start again with full strength nutrient, topping up with half strength and then adjusting the pH. It's a bit of a cheat, but it's always worked for me. The MD system is one of the original hydroponic systems to the market and still going strong. If you want any more information on the systems, jump on the Global Air's website. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna go and look at the OxyPot. So the OxyPot is a very simple system to use and I'm gonna go through it in a little bit more detail. Let me introduce the OxyPot system from Nut Systems. Really, really simple system comes in five different variants from a single system all the way up to the five plant system. It's a really, really great system, been on the market for years and years and years. It's relatively easy to use. All we're talking about here is a reservoir 
filled with enriched water with nutrient and an oxy stone, which basically bubbles up in the nutrient, breaking the water tension, which allows the plants to feed. It's that simple. Oxy pots are just water, air stones and trays, but they work really, really well. You can keep the system topped up. It's one of the easiest systems to use by far. I would say if you're just starting off, I would always start off with a growing medium because it gives you a little bit of give and take when you're growing, but an oxy pot is really, really easy to use. Let me explain a little bit about how the oxy pot works. It's really, really simple. You have a tank, you have a tray, you have a mesh pot, and you have an air pump and an air stone. What the tank does, it holds the nutrient enriched water. The air pump forces air through an air stone which bubbles into the water. The bubbles break the air tension in the water, which creates a mist around the root zone, which allows the plants to take exactly what they want, nutrient-wise, out of the system, grow massive beards of root into the water, and really, really supercharge how quick that plant grows. We've got a single oxy pot, and this is a three, two, or single. So if you only want to grow in three, you want to grow two, you use this and put the cap in. If you want to use just a single, you get another cap and cover them up. So it's quite universal in how many different styles you can use. A great way to use this three pot or single pot system, take the pots out, spin it round, drop it in, drop the pots in, and you'll see the water is just at the bottom of all the pots. That's what you do when they're really, really young to get the roots established within the system really, really quickly. When the roots are dangling down out of the pot and you want to put a little bit more water in there, simply take the pots out, spin the system round. It allows you to fill up with more water, put the rooted pots back in, and you've got a bigger chamber for more root mass. So it's quite universal to get those young plants growing and then you can put them in the right way up like this and that will allow the roots to grow really down. Show you how it works internally. You have a big tank full of water. You have an air stone like this being fed with an air pump. Drop that into the water. You can see that it starts to fizz straight away. You're not actually putting oxygen in the water when you do that. What you're doing, you're folding oxygen in when you break the surface tension. And what you'll see all around the inside of a tank, you get tiny little bubbles. That means you completely saturated the water with oxygen, which is absolutely perfect for the oxypot. A couple of tips I like to give you is always add the air pump above the water level. If anything goes wrong, the diaphragm in here splits. It will work in reverse. It will suck the water out of the tank and literally blow here, potentially blowing the fuels. So always have it above the water line so water can't gravity feed back to your pump, causing you any issues. Again, it's a really, really simple system that's super, super effective. Keep the tank topped up all the time. Make sure you're using your Aquamaster pH and EC pens because it's really, really important. As with the grow tanks, you're growing nutrient and rich water directly on the roots. So you have to make sure the EC and the pH is spot on. When you're filling the pots up, make sure you use a nice clean pebble. We like the hydrocon and the hydrocone pebbles from Gold Label. They're really clean and it gives something for the water uh, and the plant's roots to grab hold of because we've got a nice bit of water retention around the pebble. For completely smooth pebbles, I wouldn't like to use, but the hydrocone pebbles work really, really well in this system. Put the unit back on. Drop the plants in, turn the air pump on, you're up and running. Just make sure it's topped up all the time. Make sure you support the plant as well because you're going to get a massive plant growing out of here. Nothing supporting it, so you've got to support the plant or it's going to fall over and you don't want that because you don't want the pot tipping up or breaking the root mass. It's an absolutely great beginner system. I would be using this system going from pots to soil to wanting to go full active hydroponics this is a perfect stepping stone into the multi-duct and the GT systems. So that's it guys. I've gone through all the different nut systems. I've shown you propagation, the origins, the GTs, the oxypots, and the MD systems. The, every single system has got a unique method of growing and it's down to you to choose which method works for you best. So thanks for listening. See you again.